know, we're not here to cry. We're here to celebrate Pine's life tonight. So let's have a good time and remember Pine however you remember him. Here he spent his last years loved by Austin. I think Austin really embraced him and, and gave him a good life the last few years of his life. I think we lost a lot. It also says something about us to have that old man dressing nice and going out to the club and playing every night. That, that's a heck of an example for our city. He's smiling and looking sharp. He always sat there and sold his CDs, and then there was another seat back there by the shoe shine rack where he sat and smoked his little cigarette. And to see him playing with Willie Big Eye Smith, like, you know, the three times that I saw him here at Antone's, some of the best musical nights of my life. We're just gonna miss Pine Top. She got the signs ready, helped inflate the balloons. And we're excited. Now the trick for Sonia Olguin was waiting. I couldn't even drive over here. I was so nervous, and we're still nervous. Nervous for her husband, Bobby. Where is he? One of over 100 soldiers returning to Fredericksburg after serving in Iraq. He used to work mortgage company. Now he left that, and he went active military, so he wanted to put all his 100% attention into the military. The little boy Christian was nervous and excited too. I'm saying but well, they playing games with me. Watching movies with me. But before that could happen, they were faced with the wait. I'm getting very impatient. And it didn't help that one of the buses broke down, delaying the return by an hour. I waited 11 months, I can wait another hour. The rumble of a bus. Open the sign, open the sign. Finally signaled the moment Sonia had waited for. Daddy's coming. As one by one, where's my Mima? They came home. <laughs> Sonia and Christian waited, and then. <laughs> As a family came back together after their first time so far apart. <laughs> you made it. It was worth going over there. I've always wanted to be activated, and it finally happened. Now he's looking forward to spending time with the family, having a great time, enjoying it. Ashley Porter, News 8, Fredericksburg. I just want to go to every bar up and down the street and just ask him if we can post this. She hasn't slept in days, but Missy Evans. Anybody down here last Thursday night? Won't give up. Do you mind hanging this in your window? Until she finds her son's attacker. Uh, you want to talk to them, and I'll go in here. You can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't you can't do anything but pray for your son and, and wait. Oh, is that emos? Let's go over there. This is extremely therapeutic. This is this is the first day where I haven't cried myself to to a little nap, you know what I mean? And she's not alone. Her other son Ryan so how about, um, along with friends trapes up and down 6th Street, passing out flyers and talking to anyone who might know something. This must be a really tough task for you to do. Yeah, it is. Never had anything happen to my brother before, so, you know, it's real hard to even have to do all this, but you know, anything we can do to help, that's what we're trying to do right now. Thank you, the you can sure. hand it out. Let's go share it. This flyer isn't just going up on 6th Street. They've worked their way down to Lavaca, down into the warehouse district, basically putting it all over downtown. I want to help my boyfriend as much as possible. And even if these people aren't, even if they don't know, like as long as they can just look at the flyer and give it to somebody else, that maybe they, maybe they will know. Since last Friday's early morning attack near Coyote Ugly, no one has gotten much sleep. The knowledge that Nick still lies unconscious in Brackenridge ICU gives him the fortitude to press on. Somebody's going to see these flyers, and uh, if we could just get one one person to come forward, it would be so helpful. What keeps you plugged in? My son. 
my son. And if I lose my son, I'll never stop doing this here. Bob Roebuck, News 8 Austin. Is the fire under control? But what is now called the Grand Mesa Fire is 85% contained. And as you can see behind me, firefighters will be working on deep into the night to make sure that the residents that were evacuated are now back home safe in their residence. A Texas Force Type 1 helicopter was busy most of the afternoon on Thursday. High winds made for tough firefighting conditions. Biggest challenges are the heat, drought conditions, causing the fire behavior to be very uh, unpredictable and very erratic. The Leander chief says the tough hill country terrain made for a tough firefight, but he counters the negatives of Thursday's fire by citing three positives. Public education, public education, public education. With Central Texas in the worst drought in nearly a century, increasing the risk of wildfires, fire departments region wide have stepped up their efforts to inform the public on fire protection. Our crews are in a process of actually going door to door. Our on duty crews in the subdivisions doing door hangers talking about fire prevention programs. And just three weeks ago, Leander was involved in a multi agency training exercise to train for a real life situation like this 60 acre burn. It's very concerning that it's, it's right on our back back porch and we saw it from our house. This local resident says she is glad the firefighters were ready to tackle this task head on. It seems like they were real quick to, to get on top of it and, and I appreciate that. A lot of trucks out here, a lot of fire trucks, uh, helicopters and, and, and took care of it real quickly. So as firefighters continued to pour water on the smoky debris, residents in this Leander neighborhood are resting a little easier after a long day of fire danger. As you can see there, the fire is still lighting up in this portion of this uh, neighborhood, and it does seem like it will be a threat, but firefighters will be here all night long. We'll pan over to the left and show you that they are still on the scene and they are spraying that the best they can. They are not any helicopters on scene, uh, but they are making sure that these residents here are going to be safe. Uh, this evening. Now, with Central Texas and the rest of the state in a severe fire drought, firefighters expect that this will be a long, hot, dry, and dangerous summer. Our cameras roll as glass balcony panels shatter and fall for the third time this month. You can see the falling glass damage glass on balconies below. Minutes later, they crumble to the ground. Tom Tingley, Danny Hat, and their dog Boo Boo live on the 26th floor facing south. Somebody just below, one floor below us lost their panels. Yeah. So we're kind of scared to go. Oh, we can't go out there actually. We're not supposed to anyway. It is up to condo residents to decide if they want to evacuate. The W Austin is sending guests to other hotels indefinitely. Bo Armstrong is CEO of the building's developer, Stratus Properties. We still do not know what, what, the, what the reason is. We've had, we've got experts, experts, experts consulting with us. Um, I made the decision we're going we're gonna to take all the glass out because it's just not safe. That decision was made Monday after three glass panels fell from the east side of the building. It damaged several cars below and broke a window on a nearby building. On June 10th, two panels crashed onto the pool deck and sent three people to the hospital. One of those injured filed a lawsuit Tuesday. Austin City Manager says the city is working with the developer as it has since the high rise was first conceived. I don't have any reason to believe that there's anything wrong with the inspection, <laughs> the inspection process that our inspectors carries out. Hat and Tingley plan on staying in their condo for the time being, even though the hotel below will be empty as a safety precaution. It's nothing that could have been expected or anything. It's just a fluke and they're working to fix it. In downtown Austin, Jeff Stensland, YNN. They made that announcement on uh, uh, Monday night after. And the waters here at Shoal Creek are rising quickly. And several nonprofit groups worked together with the city to raise. Gunter did not make the trip to Seattle. She's back home battling bronchitis. Then you'll see more than the leaves change for fall. Rambunctious kids with pens and pencils. Had to quit his job and uh, went through. Take found objects and make them into something new. Straight ball games. Now, of course, they played El Paso to start the season. They won four of six games. And um, I worked in fashion after I got out of college, and I made no money.